Just six days after my 23rd birthday, I packed up my van and started driving, kicking off what would be the craziest, most transformative, and action-packed year of my life. Okay guys, I'm at the Walmart. I've been driving for like 10 hours and my butt hurts so bad. <laughs> I'd like to say that I had this master road trip planned out to the letter, but the whole year kind of unfolded day by day. So when I first set out, I don't know, Joshua Tree sounded like a place someone with a van would go. So that's where I went first. climb on all of these rocks so bad. This was the first time living out of my van for more than just a weekend camping trip. Everything was new and messy, but it felt so good to be alone in the desert with the van. But then a cold spell hit and the nights were brutal. No wonder I was so cold last night. There's like frost everywhere. I had a winter sleeping bag and a hot water bottle, but my van was not built out with these kind of temperatures in mind. So after a week of making fires and exploring the park, I left to find warmer weather. Alright, here's the campground! The campground was actually more of a parking lot, and it made me feel so tiny in that big open space. The campground also had other perks, like a $5 shower. I got this whole place to myself. I'm gonna take the longest shower. Death Valley was so good to me, but eventually I moved on because I had a long drive to Portland. There, I would be boarding my first international flight. friend and I hopped around Vietnam and Thailand on bus and tuk-tuk, boat, van, airplane, and foot. We went to museums, parks, temples, restaurants, the beach, the club. We made every mistake in the book. Down the alley. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't need the blanket to on top of us, so at least we can lay on it. But managed to have an incredible time regardless. <laughs> we finally caught up. 
without a break. <laughs> we even get soap here. Look at that. And mini toothbrush with little mini toothpaste. <laughs> But then my friend returned back to the US and I met up with a big group of strangers to explore Cambodia with. I was a little nervous at first because again we were all strangers, but this group clicked so fast and we did so many crazy things together. Big boy right there. Big, big cricket boy. What are those? Oh my god, there's the proof. Ooh, that was juicy. Oh, you did? Wow, am I in it? I can't tell. I think so. Is it a photo okay. or a video? It's a video, so just... Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for you. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, this Yes, 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 yes. Okay, yeah, you come and see some people. Thank you. Come on, come on. And of course, I had to share the dumbest thing I did this year. Oh. Southeast Asia was by far the most eye-opening experience of my life. I learned that the world is so much bigger than I ever thought. Growing up in the US, you're brought up with this weird patriotism where you think the US is doing it right and every other country should follow suit. But traveling in these places, I experienced such lively and exciting culture, amazing food, the kindest people, beautiful landscapes, and a way of life where everyone just seemed so happy. I flew back to the U.S. with a new perspective on the world, and I drove to Michigan from Portland. Back to the car! It's actually really cool. I stopped at a few places along the way, but I didn't know what I was going to do when I got back. At the time, I had a job that was on site most of the year and online in the winter, which is what I had been doing up to that point in the year. I loved my job and my coworkers, but my boss was a crazy manipulative head, and it was starting to really impact my mental health. I had a pretty nice chunk of savings at that point, and I'm damn good at my job, so I wasn't worried about taking the risk and finding a new one. I spent the next month or so sleeping in my parents' basement and working on improvements to the van. <laughs> no, we're good. Yes. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Rick. Say hi, Rick. Yeah, well, you can think. Come on, you're sharing it with us. <laughs> How's the cake, Dad? I like to put my pencil in my bun. Never lose it. Being home was great, but I can't sit still for long, so I applied to work in a couple of my favorite national parks for the summer. Yosemite offered me the best job and best pay, and within a few weeks, I was driving back to the West Coast. 
My time in Yosemite was a whirlwind. I was working a lot, but I was also surrounded by the most beautiful scenery 24-7. It almost didn't feel real. The whole thing felt like summer camp, living in a tent, swimming in the lakes and rivers, silly summer romances, backpacking and camping, most of which I failed to get on video. Your water bottle or something? Oh no, I'm good. Are you sure? You need oh, I just turned on! <laughs> but that's kind of how you know it was a summer to remember. I guess there's nothing to do but start. Definitely using a lot of arm strength. <sighs> Holy smokes. <laughs> Ow. Oh my god. Oh my god, I just hit my body bones so hard. At some point, my heart was telling me it was time to leave Yosemite, and the next place I wanted to experience was Channel Islands National Park. I booked a boat to Santa Cruz Island and was off. You better not go in my tent. There's nothing in there, okay? In a flash, my campsite was invaded by like a hundred million Boy Scouts or something. I don't know. But I have to find a place to eat my noodles in peace. I really think I'm onto something here. The cold water with the hot nudes. After my quick trip in the Channel Islands, I spent some time just exploring the Pacific Coast Highway. My Highway 101 picturesque van life was anything but that. I feel like this shows how bad it is. <laughs> and it was very difficult to find overnight parking, so I decided to leave and visit an old and familiar friend, Joshua Tree. This time I wanted to experience it in a whole new way with some of the things I had learned in Yosemite. My shadow is so funny. And I'm also really cool because this is my chalk bag right now. One done. Okay, this one's called pork rinds. This one's called corned beef hash. <laughs> I 
I had such a blast coming back to Joshua Tree, a little older and wiser, definitely enjoying the warmer temperatures. Eventually I ended up at a spot I've wanted to visit for years and it did not disappoint, White Sands National Park. This is incredible! Hey, but we do have to go somewhere steeper. Okay, this one is significantly bigger. Doo -doo. And it looks like a lot of people have slid on it before, so that's a good sign. Let's do this. <laughs> After White Sands, it only made sense to pay a visit to the nearby Guadalupe Mountains National Park, where I think life on the road was finally starting to get to me. Okay, I don't even really know where I am. I was just driving last night to this rest area. So. My van is such a mess, I can't even find my tripod, so this is gonna look bad, but I'm good. Honestly, real talk, I am getting a little bit frustrated because the van is such a mess right now that I can't find my extra camera batteries, I can't find my tripod. Oh my god. Literally immediately after I stopped filming that video, I opened the doors to get out of the van. And my favorite coffee mug was sitting right here. And I opened the door. And now it is broken. Oh my god. And I was just picking it up very carefully. And I felt like a tiny little prick. I'm not flipping them off. I'm freaking bleeding. Oh my god. <laughs> But I'm gonna try to go clean these. I'm gonna refill my water jugs. I am going to change my clothes, make something to eat, and I am a new person.
I ended up doing a sunrise hike to summit the tallest peak in Texas. And after weeks of traveling in my van since I had left my temporary tent home in Yosemite, I was once again tired. So I drove through the day and all through the night to end up at my mom's front door. I slept for a week straight. I was so exhausted, but I only had a few weeks before I was leaving for my last adventure of the year. On my birthday, I was leaving on a flight to Mexico to meet up with the girls I had met in Cambodia earlier that year. And just like that, snorkeling in caves and beautiful cenotes, I turned 24. And now looking back on it, my 23rd year was the first one that I really had the freedom to do what I wanted. I wasn't expected to be in school, I didn't have a job that I was tied to, I had the savings to fund my travels and the vehicle to help me do it. I had friends across the US that I could lean on and reconnect with and that made the journey a bit easier. From my first real nights in my van in the freezing cold desert, to boat rides in the Gulf of Thailand, to the cliffs of the Channel Islands, the stunning lakes of Yosemite, the bustling streets of Vietnam, parking lots of the US, I learned a lot in my 23rd year. This year I learned the world is even more magical and beautiful and kind than I ever thought. I learned that good people are everywhere and you're only one risk away from making a new friend. I learned travel can be as bougie and glamorous as you can afford, but you can also make many a memory with just a little bit of cash. I learned you can have amazing moments by yourself where you're alone but you don't feel like it, and I learned that traveling in a group can lead to some of the craziest and most memorable moments. And what I learned in this year is what I'm going to take into year 24 and 25 and all the rest. And I'm gonna take it to the next place I travel and I'm gonna keep growing, learning more about myself and the world. Yeah.